Hello, Zero K fans! This is Shadow Fury 33 with an exhibition match stream for you all. I'm gonna start off this stream with Flipstep and Cubay on Into Battle. And let's start right away. Flipstep starting on the northeast side of the map with Light Vehicle Factory, while Cubay in the southwest side of the map going for Shieldbot Factory. Cubay is gonna be starting out with. Ah, oh, there's a cube. Five bandits, so going for a very early heavy raid strategy, getting some melee strategies as well to support from behind, but going for very heavy raiding. While Flipstep goes for the same, two darts into three scorchers into a mason. Flipstep a bit more focused on getting some economy behind this, but we haven't really seen everything that Cubay is planning on doing at this point, though. Both players are going heavy for raiding. Flipstep, being that he's playing light vehicles on a map this flat and large, is probably going to be at an advantage. Light vehicles being as fast as they are, it makes it fairly easy to get around, or at least. Scorchers and darts are. Cuban, on the other hand, he has his bandits up. Only four, actually, not five. Didn't build that last one, but he does have his bandits up, and he does have. Well, no way of knowing exactly where Flipstep is. He probably assumes Flipstep is in the northeast side of the map, but players can start all the way along the west side or the east side, respectively. Or, other way around. Flipstep being the blue player, of course, but. Flipstep is getting himself set up. He has the Lotus ready for when the bandits come in. The bandits are also going to have to contend with a Scorcher. That's going to get in their way. Well, the Lotus not quite done yet. Looks like Flipstep is just going to finish that once he gets the Solar Collector done. Be just in time for the bandits. A little bit early, actually, but the bandits will have a harder time getting through thanks to that. And Flipstep's commander will soon be upgraded as well. Recon commander with no known upgrades yet. However, one of the bandits already goes down, and the other one, or another one of them, half health. And it looks like that's continuing to go down. The Scorcher is able to get away from this, but not quite fast enough. It needs to repair, and... Well, it needs to be repaired. Flipstep is doing exactly that. The Bandits will have a hard time to get in and actually deal any damage. While at the same time, Flipstep is set up around Cubay's base. He doesn't know what's inside of it, but he does have stuff set up. And Cubay losing all of his Bandits looks like at no cost. Flipstep able to push everything away. To point out also that there is a Roach right here. It's worth pointing that out. There is a roach there that will probably be used at some point. Very important to keep a good eye on that one. Roaches have a tendency to go off, and when they do, it's a spectacular explosion. But of course, I need to actually see it when it happens, otherwise it's not worth it. And there goes that last bandit, so Flipstep, perfectly safe, gets his mason up right as he planned. And he could go for a counterattack right now. I don't know if he will, and this is probably why Cubay has the roach here in case of counterattack. He also has a lotus in case as well, so he is pretty well equipped for defense. And a defender along the side, which will probably see this dart. Right now, Cubay, I don't believe he's aware of this. He does have... Oops. Cubay does have radar coverage of this. He knows that there is something here. He doesn't know what it is. Assuming it's a... He's just probably assuming it's a dart. He knows about this dart out here as well, so he's well aware of what's going on, but can't actually target any of them. Well, at the same time, we do have... Flipstip, who basically knows nothing about what Cubay is going... Has... Well, he... yeah, he doesn't know anything. This is a bit of a bug, but he doesn't know about any of the buildings being built. He doesn't know any of the developments so far. One of the darts is moving in to scout that out, though. We'll find at least to some extent what's going on. And what's going on is Cubay switching over to Felon Bandit. Sorry, Felon Convict. And this is not at all unusual for Cubay. We've seen the last couple games from him, or at least last game from him, and then Google Frog imitated the strategy of Felon Convict. Not Felon Thug, Felon Convict. It's entirely based around the Felon's firepower combined with the convicts basically repairing them and adding additional shield power. So, powerful strategy, but it does need to use quite a few convicts to work. The dart should be able to spot it. I think Flipstiff is able to see it. He does know about the shields. He doesn't know anything more than that, but he does see the shields, so at least he knows there's something. And now he will see it, so he knows there's a felon in. And what does he know? He might be... I don't think he's paying attention right now. He is not actually. He is... Paying attention further up north, he will not see this felon right away. But he will see it soon enough, I would imagine. Let's see what he's going for. No, nope, still going for Scorcher and Dart. He has not seen the felon. He's not paying any attention to it. This is going to be problematic once it comes up. That being said, he does know about it now. Okay, he does see it finally. Follow. Anyway, he does see it finally, so it is going to be up to him to respond. Getting a couple Ravagers, not sure I approve of that. I think Ravagers are good for tanking, or shouldn't say approve. It's not my... I'm not the one to approve of it. I don't think the game will make that work out. It's a more important question. My approval is irrelevant. The game, however, is entirely relevant here. And Ravagers, while useful for tanking the Felon Blast, 
is not going to be the best at getting under the shields. Levelers are much more useful for that, so I think a Ravager Leveler mix might be what Flipstep would use, but he isn't. And I've seen that used before. Like I said, Levelers I've seen used quite effectively against shield balls like this. Ravagers are a great way for draining the shields out. So I think that's what Flipstep is trying to do, is get a couple Ravagers up, use those to drain out the shields, and then the Scorchers can come in when the shields are completely drained, there's no more firepower, and just tear apart the felon. At the same time, Scorchers are actually coming into the base that Roach, nowhere to be found, and able to get in, get rid of one of the Lotuses, get rid of... Oh, there's the Roach. It is not in place, however, and it looks like, well, the defenses have gone down. Flipstep has no easy way of dealing more damage. At the same time, Felon is coming in, losing a lot of shield energy on these solar plants, but still able to get them out of the way. Yeah, one of the Scorchers gets away successfully. Two of them do die, however. That is a bit of a pain, and... The Lotus going down is effective if he had something to follow up with, but he doesn't. The Ravagers are going to be used to get rid of this Felon. If he is able to get rid of the Felon, then he can go for a counterattack once again. But Kyubei, using the Convicts to build up some defenses, this is the most cruel, I suppose you could say, part of the strategy, is the fact that Convicts are builders, and they can just build up in front. You can build these defenses here, and it's no problem whatsoever. So, additional support from that. You can't have to, it's a bit of a hard push strategy, you can't just go from here and have, like, thugs, for example, adding additional firepower. But, still, you have lotuses, you have defenders, you have, well, radar as well, you have everything you could want to build. You can build a proxy factor if you wanted to. Not sure what you'd build exactly, but you could. At the same time, the Scorcher is coming in and going from the south, able to get rid of some of the defenses in between, but it's gonna go down once it encounters the Felon, and at the same time, we have a Scorcher coming from the north, and the Ravagers are in position but the rogues, there are rogues for Cubay that will be effective at dealing with this. And this Scorch is going to go down for free, unfortunately. Two Scorches go down for free, actually, to those rogues. And Cubay continuing to push push forward while Flipstep actually builds up quite a lot. Now, Flipstep, by the way, has a, nearly double the economy. He's one and a half times the economy quite comfortably. Though Cubay with Reclaim is able to even it out. But Flipstep, if he's able to push this off and then continue to build more units, he should be able to actually, and actually get more caretakers so he's not floating. He should be able to just overwhelm Cubay. But the thing is, he has to get through the Felon. He has to get through the Thugs. Sorry, the Rogues as well. The Thugs are not included, but he has to get through the Felon and the Rogues. If he's able to do that, he'll be fine. But doing that is going to be a trick, especially with all these static defenses being built up, gradually getting closer. The Faraday being particularly annoying, being that it's a stun tower. However, more Ravagers and Scorchers coming in. I am still kind of surprised at the lack of levelers. I suppose you can see against the rogues is a bit problematic, but against these, against the convicts, it is priceless. However, like I said, there is some tanking going on, and that felon is running out of shield energy. Pretty much out of shield energy, however, the static defenses in the back are making sure work of it. A second felon comes in, very rapidly drains all of its energy, however. Convicts do not have a great energy regenerate, so... It's the one weakness of the felon convict ball is that the energy regen is pretty terrible. However, on the other hand, we do have the ability to reclaim, the ability to build up. Cubay is actually able to basically work around his economic disadvantage by just reclaiming everything. Though he is starting to float, but still he is able to push this once again with Caretaker, so... Cubay's lack of economy on the map is pretty much completely nullified by the fact that he can reclaim everything on the front lines. Building a Stinger as well just to add insult to injury, but honestly at this point Cubay has flips up surrounded. Flipstep does, well not quite, Flipstep does have a second caretaker here. It looks like he's building a proxy factory to the west side of the map. He has his commander up, which by the way was a light particle beam commander. And Cubay sieging his main base pretty well. So Flipstep is going to have a bit of a hard time getting units built up, getting an army built up to actually contend with this. But he can build another factory here, and I believe he is planning on doing so. But it looks like Cubay, well aware this is likely to happen, is sending his units over to the west side of the map. A gunship plant is what is being built. That is what Flipstep has to respond to this, and I suppose you can see probably Black Dawn's being used against the Felons. Maybe Banshee's being used against the Rogues. Wouldn't be a bad mix, but a little bit hard to build up all of that stuff. That's going to take a little while. The one problem with all that, and Cubay is, well, he's pushing strong. The Stinger is doing what it can. The Scorchers as well trying to help out. And actually, due to the lack of shields, it is becoming problematic. However, the Faraday is... Being counterproductive, honestly. Very counterproductive, in fact. That was... Well, that Felon is gone, thanks to that. The Felon was able to be targeted out by the Scorchers. A bunch of convicts in place, however, that will still work out fairly well. And another Felon up there. 
And the Gungeon Plant taking heavy damage will not last. That needs to be rebuilt somewhere else. And Kulkibot Factory being built over the northwest side of the map. I'm pretty sure Kyube is aware that this is likely to be happening. No, actually he's not. He is He is suspecting as much and he will find... No, we... Whoa! Where is he going? Are you going to the northwest or not, Kyube? Because that is where Flipstep has himself set up. So Kyube going to find this. Flipstep, his main base is taking a fair amount of damage, although he is trying to just build up his army behind the siege. That's not a bad idea. Get away from that. Just... Not sure. I don't agree with Scorchers, but I think Levelers wouldn't be a bad idea. And Red Avenger pointing out the Ravagers are good for the tanking, but yeah, numbers are the big question. And admittedly, I guess one Felon is not a big deal. The problem is more so the fact that on top of the Felon, there's the Lotus, there's the Faraday, there's a Stinger. I mean, there's a lot of stuff on top of the Felon. The Felons can be tanked by quite a bit, but it doesn't matter if you can't if they have a safe place to retreat to. Just a few hundred meters, well, a few meters away. Okay, measurement is kind of difficult to do in 0k, honestly. There's no easy way to measure, but it isn't far away. It's visibly quite close. It's a few seconds of walking time away. And down goes Flipster's main base, so yeah, Cubase taking that one out. And the northwest side of that Flipstep is doing his best to fend everything off. A couple other repair systems and armor, so he is definitely well equipped as best he can as a recon com to fight. But even then, it's really quite tricky. He's gonna probably, he's gonna be jumping into these rogues most likely to try to take them out close range. But we'll see. They are going to move back automatically. The Cuba doesn't even pay attention to this. He just does on fight order. And Flipstep manages to get one of the rogues out on its own. Should be able to get rid of it, but even then, Cuba has Flipstep surrounded. Flipstep has a few outposts around the map, but nothing, no, a few metal extractors around the map, not even outposts. He does have half a dozen scorches at the southeast side of the map, and a couple glades in the northwest. And that's about it. The Glaives just trying to deal with these felons best they can. They are able to able to get into it, able to dodge the projectiles into the felons, but getting too close, unable to dodge well enough, and the felons do take them out. And Flipstep's commander, while fairly tough, still has a lot to contend with here. And like I said, this isn't huge. This is one commander, a couple Glaives, and half a dozen Scorchers that are going unused. Despite the comments of in the peanut gallery, we do have no indication that these courses are going to be used anytime soon. And as I say that, of course, they are used, but I'm not sure what effect that'll be. I mean, there's a rogue a roach right here. That'll get in the way. There's a bunch of rogues up front. They are in the wrong direction, but still, this course is going to get through the roach here. If it does, that'll be fine. But it's not going to be easy. I don't even know if he's aware that roach is there, and... At the same time, Cube is just marching down Flipstep's base. The best thing that Flipstep could hope for, I suppose, is to annihilate his opponent's base as his own is annihilated in, I guess, a draw. And did Cube apparently crashed, according to the... Oh, darn it. I thought this game was a successful... Yeah, Cube apparently has crashed. So, Cube won, but Flipstep didn't... Yeah, I don't know. Okay, sorry about that. I didn't see any comments there. I must not look closely that that was a crash replay. <sighs> Alright, well anyway, I'll be back with another one in just a couple minutes. That will be hopefully not one with a crash. That'll be Radavadra and Segero, the peanut gallery from the last game. Have that in just a couple moments, so stay tuned. <laughs> 